almost out of Ethiopian, boy. You love it, huh? Hell yeah. <laughs> it tastes like there's some orange peels in it or something. What, what is this one? That's the uh, Kenya Gichathaini. Yeah, that has, has some fr real fruity flavors too. Yeah. When people watch this, this is probably where they'll be like, stupid hipsters. Video portraits of American trendsetters. 10 cities across the country, five episodes in each city. This week in San Francisco, we're hanging out with Jeremy Tooker at Four Barrel Coffee. Are we doing a meeting soon? If we can't fit it in next week and the week after, I'm just like- I'll leave on Saturday. Wait, this Saturday? This Saturday. Oh, fuck. Well, I'm going to Ethiopia on Friday, like two weeks again. Are you going by yourself? Yeah, switching subjects. Do you have time to do any dialing in of the FETCO and shit like that? Yeah. Have we tried cupping it out? Not yet. Put me on the wholesale meeting. How'd I go? What did I miss? <laughs> Everything? It's yes, we're done. Let me give you the little nickel tour real quick. We'll walk through oh, the whole okay, space. Cool. Here's the slow bar. Okay. So those those coffees change all the time. Main bar. So you can see, you know, they got the pastry case, they got two registers, two espresso machines, and then the, the production, the roastery. And then here's the four barrel. This is basically the, the heart and soul of the buying operation. Hmm. Drop it in. See, I'm already starting to shake a little bit. <laughs> That's why I don't want to drink another cup of coffee, man. <laughs> How long did it take you to um, get four barrel fully staffed? Well, when we first started off, we had a bare barrel staff. When we opened up, I definitely, we had, we had some, some pretty bad customer service. <laughs> <laughs> because we have like a, a reputation for being the hipster coffee shop or whatever, and gained a reputation of being snotty baristas. I've taken it on four barrel to sort of try to change the perception of, of these high-end coffee shops to the consumer. You know, a lot of these newer companies will even get caught up so much in their own product that they forget that they're selling it to somebody and that somebody wants to buy it, not just because of the product, but because of the service that comes with it. We were building out four barrel. Myself and two other guys have built the entire place out. Uh, so we definitely got our hands dirty. Yeah, I didn't do a good job of balancing the, the, uh, the family life and the business life at first. I was, you know, 80 hours a week plus. I'm a workaholic too, I like to work, so it's taken me a long time to learn how to not work. Where's my kid? Where's my kid? Surprisingly, I don't have anything in the evening, so. That's great. Yeah, it's the same for me. But that can all change. Let's <laughs> drop that. Strawberry face. When I was a kid, I was lost. And when I got into coffee, I was like, you know, starting to really find my way. So I associated my identity with coffee. But when Rogan was born, seeing how much I was missing out on his life. I, I missed potty training. I was in Sulawesi. I missed uh, when he was first walking. I was in Ethiopia. You know, it was, so I missed a lot of stuff, and that really forced me to to uh, figure out how to how to not work so much, which is very difficult. And it's still something I struggle with every day. What do you want to do today, buddy? You want to go to the beach with Daddy? Yeah. It's gonna be cold, but it'll still be fun. <laughs> yeah. This is the four barrel roaster. This is the namesake for this spot. It was just sort of one of those obscure things. I just like the sound of it. It was more of a phonetic thing. I think for the next place, I want to come up with something entirely different, like completely obscure that actually has nothing to do with coffee or bread or. Gotcha. That's sort of, that's why I'm having difficulty. Like yeah, I, yeah.
I didn't want to be stuck with the aesthetic of Four Barrel and I didn't want the stigma that comes along with it as well. I wanted to go into a different neighborhood, figure out what that neighborhood needed and figure out that aesthetic of that neighborhood. I started asking around if everyone wanted a bakery. So I teamed up with my friend Josie Baker who does pop-up bread out of Mission Pie, Pizza Ill in the East Bay. So what now? Name. Name. Got to have a naming party. We gotta have a naming party. Seriously. Can we have a naming party? I have some. <laughs> How do we want to continue to split this stuff up moving forward? Initially, Jeremy said, I'll do, basically do it all. And then I was like, no, 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 no. Come on, give me some. He's like, I'm not a complete to do. asshole. <laughs> Where's he going? A uh, cafe and a bakery. Oh, right. bakery? Yeah, yes. And the other reason I don't want to call it four barrel is I don't want to do another four barrel. A little less, less uh, intentionally cool this time around. I want to do something new. So, so maybe we'll bring the bucket so we can keep the jellyfish alive. Yeah. You can help them. We can put them back in the. We can put them back in the ocean. Get them. And the sharks won't get them. Coffee definitely is one of those things that inspires thought, you know. When you drink it, it, it can take you back to your childhood. It can, it can make you think about the future. I'm thinking about stuff, I'm trying to change things. I don't, want, I don't have any aspirations to change the world, and I'm, not, I'm just one person, but I think that if we can do something better, we should. Next time, in Austin, Texas, bin diving and vintage clothing with a real sweetheart at Charm School Vintage. Just had a wonderful day, drinking um, cups on cups on cups on cups of coffee. Let me know what you think about the wonderful black bean we all know and love. Leave me a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.